Today's coin is a 10 cent piece from the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. And I love that I got this coin in my random pick today, mainly because it's got this really neat edge on it that I will talk about in just a second. What I also like about the Bahamas, besides the fresh ocean breeze and picturesque island vibe, is that it does have the typical one cent, five cent, 10 cent, and 25 cent coins, but they also have a 15 cent coin. And it's square, ah, I think that's so cool. I don't have one of those right now, but I thought it was very interesting. So I thought I'd share and encourage you to check it out. The coin I do have, the 10 cent piece, has the coat of arms from the Bahamas on one side and two bonefish swimming on the other. The edge is a smooth, it's kind of a wavy pattern called a scalloped edge, maybe representing the waves of the ocean since Bahamas is an island? Most coin edges, they're either smooth, kind of like our penny, or they have those little ridges on them, like our quarter. If you have some change laying around, pause the video, go check it out. We call the edges with the ridging reeded edges, and this was originally done when coins were made of metals that were more valuable, like gold or silver. And this is because people would actually shave the edges of the coin down and collect the valuable metal, and then, you know, you do that enough times and that kind of adds up. But with reeded edges, you wouldn't be able to do that without it being noticeable. Also, it made the coins a little bit more difficult to counterfeit as well. Nowadays, coin metal isn't really worth as much, so no one's going around shaving off the edge of a dime. However, reading can also help the visually impaired tell the difference between coins of a similar size. So a smooth penny or a ridged dime, they're about the same size, and if you're visually impaired, you can tell the difference because of the ridging, or the reading, I should say. Okay, so I didn't really talk about the element aspect of our coin today. That's because this coin happens to be both copper and nickel, and I've already covered both copper and nickel this week. I was hoping it would have another metal mixed into it, like aluminum or tin maybe. However, no such luck. So, double the copper, double the nickel, and tomorrow we'll hopefully have a brand new element for you here on Element Today in May on Coin Week for Everyday Science.